Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome to another video and in today's video we have got chapter number five of the magical readathon which has been revealed. So I'm really excited. I'm going to be reading this along with you. As always, I will leave all of the other chapters of the videos that I've done down below in the description so you can follow if you haven't been following already chapters one to four as well as my book choices that I've put towards the prompts. So let's go ahead with chapter number five which released on the 29th of December. I'm so excited and I am ready. So it says here, another month has passed and even though you three have tried to uncover the mystery of the air, you did not learn much else. On one sunny morning during breakfast, Professor Sprout announced that the mandragoras are almost ready and the victims of the attacks can be healed in less than a fortnight. Naturally, that means that they can tell us who the attacker is, so it was agreed in the group to just give it a rest and let the teachers sort this out. The overall spirit seems to lift quite a bit as another day passes without any attacks. There's a little party at the dorm tonight. As a long weekend approaches, many students will be going home for a brief visit. You can't miss a chance for some fun. Ron and Hermione will both go too, but you know that Neville will be staying and you've got plans to hang out with him for a couple of days. You haven't had a lot of time with him this year. Who? What do you do during the little party? Do you dance to the Weird Sisters, play a game of gobstones, or do you sneak in a butterbeer? Now, now, butterbeer is really nice. Well, if it tastes like the one that I've had at the studio tour, I actually like it. Some people don't. I know it's a very acquired taste. Do I dance like I'm dancing to a band though? Or do I play a game? See, I think I will have a dance. I think I'll dance to the Weird Sisters like it's a band. So let's select that option. So, the next thing you know, you're finishing a late lunch the next day in a very secluded great hall, asking Neville what his plan is. Oh, I actually almost forgot, but I have to help Professor Sprout in the greenhouses with the mandragoras. Me and a couple of our students are volunteering. There's a lot of work in getting the cell that we need to unpractify the victims. So you look a bit surprised. You didn't know that they asked for help, but you'd be more than willing to lend a hand. However, after you say just that to Neville, he turns all flustered and red. Oh, no offence, but it's just selected few, well, a few that are very good with plants as we can't afford to mess these up. He then seems very uncomfortable with the implication that he just made, so he adds very quickly, not that I think you would, but we just have to be very careful, and Professor said that. And then you interrupt him with a short laugh, saying that you totally understand, not to sweat it, but it's nice outside, so you might as well walk with him to the greenhouse and see if you can help with some minor way that doesn't interfere with the process. The greenhouse seems five times more chaotic when compared to when you saw it last anyway. Mud splatters every table, the mandragoras seem to have a little snow fight, and minus the snow of course, a couple of students and Professor Sprout are fussing about and hurriedly adding more earth into the now half empty pots because that was deemed as the closest thing to snow by them. And in the end, you did manage to be a bit helpful, but after an hour of dragging more sacks of earth and cleaning some tables up, you tell Neville that you will see him later and head back to the castle. We've only got one option here and it just says enter the castle. Your confident posture slumps once you enter the castle to a faint whisper of the dreaded creature in the walls. You had nightmares almost every night of hearing this bloodthirsty whispering again, as every time you did, someone else has been attacked. So you let out a whimper and run towards the general direction of the voice as it grows louder and louder and then it's gone. Thankfully you don't seem to be the first at seen this time. You sneak behind a corner, not wanting to be spotted and poke out to scan the corridor floor. You feel such a relief when you cannot see anybody, maybe the teachers got in here in time to defend them. As Professor McGonagall's Snake Flitwick and Gildor are the ones who beat you there. But your heart drops when you notice the grimness in Professor McGonagall's voice. Well that can't be right. Ginny, but you thought she went home and went wrong. It takes another couple of painful minutes for the information to truly sink in. Ginny has been taken. Ron and Hermione are not there. You must help. You're about to enter into the line of view, but you hear the teachers speaking about evacuating the students in the morning. Now there's nothing else left to do but close Hogwarts and make sure that everybody is safe. You can hear the teachers giving up and you hear Lockhart making very poorly time jabs at how he would have dealt with the situation if he had arrived earlier. 
Lockhart then leaves with a weird little nod as the rest continue to speak in hushed voices. How can they say that when Ginny is taken? You have to come up with something and come up with it fast. In chapter 4, which of the following has happened to you? Did you follow the spiders? You met Fawkes or Dobby sent a bludger after me? I remember Dobby sent a bludger, so we're going to go with that. You allow yourself 10 minutes of pure panic and pacing and then you gather yourself. Okay, think, what can you do and what do you know? Malfoy doesn't seem to have much to do with this, contrary to what he'd like everyone to believe, because the Chamber of Secrets, a house elf named Dobby, has tried to kill you. The chamber has been open before, the teachers don't seem to have any clue as to where it might be located. But Dobby must know more than he's let on. Would he come if you called? Dobby, are you here? With a dull pop, a familiar skinny figure covered with a burlap pillowcase appears. Dobby, please can you help me? Tell me if you know anything that can help and you feel rather desperate. In chapter one, did you make a false promise to Dobby that you would not be returning to Hogwarts? Did I lie? <laughs> no, um, no, I didn't think I did. I did not lie. Yes, sir, of course, anything. His smile wavers as he starts rubbing his dry hands together in panic. But I'm afraid that I will not be of much use, sir, because Bobby has been prohibited from saying anything about it. He would love to, or he would, but his masters have told him not to. He knows things, Dobby knows things, nobody ever notices Dobby cleaning, but Dobby hears things. Dobby knows much about the Chamber of Secrets, Dobby's tennis ball eyes filled up with tears, but Dobby cannot do anything about it. Just watch and not be able to help. Seizing the moment before it quickly turns into Dobby's punishment sequence, you cut him off and reassure him. That's okay Dobby, don't worry, I understand. Hypothetically, if you knew where the Chamber of Secrets is, could you take me there without telling me out loud about it? Dobby's eyes dart from one side of the floor to another. And you see that his ears perk up and him jump up and down. Dobby could. Without a second's notice, Dobby grabs your hand, snaps his fingers with another, and you feel a tug in your stomach as if you are inverting with yourself and everything goes black. One option here is to open your eyes, so let's select that. You must, you mutter. You sort of regret it as it illuminates what you are standing on. Bones, lots of tiny bones, most likely rats. The air is so thick with moisture that you can feel beads of water collecting on your skin. You take a quick look around, the green mossy brick walls surround you, the tunnel goes straight for a couple of metres and then it forks out. You keep your wand and mind at the ready, preparing a couple of spells that you can use if the need arises. You need to hurry and find Ginny before it's too late. Do I go left or do I go right? I will go right because women are always right. <laughs> I don't know. So you turn right and it's bloody dark. You raise your shining ones above your head to illuminate more of your path as you hear a high pitched screech from above you. And your first thought that is that there are bats, but angry blue pixies appear, trying to tangle in your hair and pull your wand away from you, snatching at your robes and trying to poke you in the eyes. So you try to spot them away, but there's far too many. However, you are relieved, and this is exactly one thing you did learn from Defence Against the Dark Arts lessons, thanks to Professor Lockhart, though immobilis. So we select that and we go to the next page. Phew, that was hard, but you have a nagging feeling it will not be the hardest thing that you have to do today. With shaking knees, you continue on and reach an ornate brass circle door with seven snakes interlinked. Without thinking too much, you ask for it to open, imagining the snakes come into life. Another hiss comes out of you and the door does spring to life. It scratches itself when the snakes slither into their new positions, allowing for the heavy metal door to click and swing slightly open. You then lean your whole body's weight into it to push enough to squeeze through you are focused on the task at hand that you only now notice the space that you've stepped in the chamber is enormous and this is the chamber of secrets there are massive snake fountains the size of hagrid's hut on each side of you they make a straight path towards the biggest statue of them all of salazar slytherin right at the end of it the place is so echoey that every step you take on the hard marble floor carries you through the chamber and back, making it very hard to be unnoticed. And as you carefully walk forward, a little shape catches your eye at the very bottom of the path. A little black soaked robe and ginger hair. It's Ginny. She doesn't seem to be moving though. Run towards Ginny. That's this next one. Well, well, if it isn't the famous saviour, I'm really lucky to meet you. Hope you didn't go through too much trouble finding us here. We were just having a little catch up with Miss Weasley, although she did seem to have gotten a bit too weak to carry a conversation. So it's about time that you showed up. I was beginning to get bored. 
a nice cold voice greets you and you jump to turn around away from Ginny on whom you were checking her pulse is so weak but it is there a handsome boy of around 16 is standing near to the left neither a ghost nor surely alive either something close to a memory its voice and tone not much in the young boy standing in front of you how rude of me I am Tom Marvolo Riddle but you may know me by a different name of course takes one trace his name in front of you with a swish of his wand the letters by new places and it spells out i am lord voldemort well that's just brilliant truly brilliant your mind works a mile per hour trying to find a way to get out of this situation the only advantage you see is that he doesn't seem to be fully himself and that you still have your wand but no matter what you think it all just ends up with you dying here with Ginny, and there's no way that you're leaving her behind let's see you dance i hope you're not too tired wouldn't that be fun to watch and he turns towards the centre statue, opens his wantless hand towards it, says, open, kill them, serve the rightful heir of Slytherin. To your complete shock, the statue in front of you moves, its mouth opening only to allow entrance of one enormous snake and a live one, which is a basilisk. And then we have one more option here, which is, well, crap. So this will take us to the next page. It says here, who are you here with? A rooster, Dobby, or by myself? Well, I came here with Dobby, didn't I? So I'm going to select Dobby. So you run back to the door that you came from where you asked Dobby to stay, not wanted to get him in the way, of course, and get hurt. Please send for help. I can't survive long. There's a basilisk in there. Can you do that and be back soon, please? Dobby seems flustered as he sees your panic eyes. He clicks his fingers, disappears to reappear a split second, which is a bit too soon. You look around desperately. Sorry seeping into your bones every second that passes after you. You realise that nobody else is here with him. You're about to ask Dobby why he didn't bring anyone when the elf pushes an old hat into your hands. You can feel the metal creaking behind you as the basilisk is pushing its way through. The door is holding still, but not for too long. You let out a strangled cry and look at what you're holding. Read a prompt. Hey, we've got one here. Read a prompt. Your reading prompt. Read a book that has a sword on the cover. It's a sorting hat? Dobby, why? I don't know, so it just felt right. I just let Elves magic guide me. You clutch the hat to your chest as you lean back on your shoulders at the door. Suddenly the hat feels much heavier. You open your eyes, try to see what's inside. You reach in the field of cold metal hilt. Is that what you think it is? You've seen it only briefly in Dumbledore's office. You pull it out of the hat and your eyes go wild. It's the sword of Gryffindor. By no means are you a swordsman, but it's better than nothing, right? You run further into the tunnel as you hear the door give away. You close your eyes and hear a distant pop as Dobby apparates himself on top of the basilisk's head. What is he doing? He starts to try and shake him off. More difficult task than might seem, giving you the opportunity to try and pierce through him. You half stumble, half fall, your eyes closed again, just letting your fear turn into rage. You feel your sword sinking into something. Hopefully it's not Dobby. But then there's a significant silence and after a moment, no sooner that you haven't been eaten, you open your eyes. The basilisk is unmoving. Dobby is clutching his sides unarmed. You have no idea how you just survived this, but you're not going to question it. You make your way back to Ginny, who is still unconscious. Well, it seems I've underestimated you, which is most annoying, but fear not once I have gained my powers back fully, and once this girl's body gives in, which won't be for long now, I will. He is then cut off by Dobby, who's just popped into view above an old Tom Riddle's diary. Not if Dobby can help it, sir, and he stabs the diary with what looks like a basilisk spam. Voldemort releases an angry scream but fades away before he can say anything else. You're far too stunned to say anything, but Dobby shrubs, repeats, Elves know a lot, sir, the wizards never ask. Ginny then wakes. Ask Dobby to get you three back to the castle, so that's the only option, so we're going to select that here. You were then made to sleep for about two, three days, but who is counting at the hospital wing and before you're allowed to even think about going back to your dorm? You have many visitors, Ginny, Mrs and Mr Weasley, Ron and Hermione, Dumbledore. After prefacing that it was extremely risky and perhaps not the brightest ideas to go down on a rescue mission, he tells you that you showed an amount of courage, loyalty and love that night and he awards you 100 house points, although he winks at you and asks you not to boast about it to too many friends. He also informs you that Dobby was set free by a fanciful trick of Dumbledore's but he doesn't specify exactly what that trick was. You are happy just to hear that Dobby can finally be free of his awful masters. Soon it seems that most of the school has heard of your adventures and whilst more attention wasn't what you wanted, at least this time it isn't driven by fear or speculation of you being some evil heir. You get a few apologies from fellow students, the most smile and nod appreciatively when they passed. Even those who don't normally like you that much seem thankful that due to your efforts Hogwarts will be here to welcome them home next year. You, Ron and Hermione, then set off to the Great Hall for the end of the year feast 
where you'll laugh, celebrate and eat at your heart's desires. All is well. Congratulations, you've completed the Winter Magical Readathon. I hope you have enjoyed your journey. See you next time. So, now I've got to pick a book that goes towards that reading prompt of reading a book with a sword on the cover. So I will now go off to find that book. So I was looking around and actually I went onto Goodreads, I went onto the Listopia because I was like I wonder if someone's done a list of like book others with swords on and luckily there is a couple of lists there and I was trying to look through the lists of like books that I actually own as we're now going to be heading into January so I can actually put this on my January TBR which is like brilliant and out of the list the one that I was jumping more towards was Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta. I do have a physical copy of this somewhere in my garage so i'll place a picture over here for you guys to see and i will be putting that on to my tbr for the month of january so i'm very very excited about that because it was on a couple of people's top books of 2019 actually as a sort of like a gender bent story which yeah about king arthur i think so i'm really excited about that i've owned it for quite a few months and it released in 2019 so I'm really excited to get around to reading it and I'm hoping that I do enjoy it. So hello guys that is the end of my reaction and sort of like going through chapter number five of the readathon which is the finale. All of the other books I'm reading towards the other reading prompts I'm going to push forwards onto January if I haven't got around to reading them yet so they will be going forwards onto January. I still haven't read a couple. I think I've only completed one of the reading prompts which was just chapter one. So far I'm currently in the middle of my second challenge and I've yet to start my third and my fourth and then I've now got the fifth. So I'm not doing too badly, I'm slowly working towards them but like I say pushing the forwards towards January it will get done and I'm reading my reading prompts which is really really good as well. So there you have it guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. All of my social media links will be linked down below in the description if you'd like to follow me elsewhere, if you haven't done already. I'm frequently on Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram, that sort of jazz. We can be friends, it's awesome. Bookish friends is awesome. Stay tuned for a lot of videos to come. I've got a lot of videos to film. I have been unwell with the flu, so I have just been behind with videos. But now that I'm feeling better, hopefully it means I'll have more time to sort of edit and upload them for you guys. But yeah, that's it for me guys. Thank you very much for watching. Keep smiling, keep reading, I'll be happy. And I'll see all of you wonderful awesome people in my next video. Bye!